And good afternoon, everyone. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and this is the Friday afternoon Kiso Vlog Network. If you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We are recording now live till 5, and then we'll post it up on YouTube so you can come by later and do a call letter search for KC9VKV, and that will take you to our Kiso Vlog page, where we're now featuring about 880 uh, some odd Kiso Vlog air checks. Also this afternoon, we're running four Internet SDR receivers monitoring Rochester, New York, Atlanta, Georgia, Arlington, Virginia, and Milford, Pennsylvania, trying to get a better copy on our 100-watt friends. Now, the audio from these four SDR receivers comes up on a six-position rotary selector. Also in this selector is our local receiver audio. And today our local receiver is running two large 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas, one aimed north and south, the other east and west. The north and south mag loop can be rotated. They are selected by a three-position rotary selector. Position three of this selector is a cophase option that many times is 3 to 4 dB hotter than mag loop 1 or 2 by themselves. We do use a lot of rotary selectors in our shack, mainly because there's nothing faster than a rotary switch for comparing multiple signals. And today we're running two separate transmit and receive radios. Our normal modified Yaesu FT990 will be the transmit radio, and an ICOM 7300 will be our test receiver radio. The idea being that the 7300 has a lot uh, newer digital receive technology, so that's what we'll be evaluating. One of yesterday's great radios, the Yaesu 990, in an A-B test with the newer ICOM Digital 7300. Of course, this is just a side work survey because they will not be sharing the same antenna. The 990 will be on a resonant NOSWR dipole antenna, and the 7300 will be using our large twin 10-foot magnetic loop antennas with cophase option. Also today, we'll be running our new visual input source indicator. So when we switch receivers from the 7300 to the 990, you'll be able to hear the switch and see the switch automatically. And since it is an input source indicator, you'll also be able to see which of the Internet SDR receivers I might be using at the moment. You'll have to check it out on our YouTube QSO Vlog video. Our new visual input source indicator. Well, those are our working conditions. How about yours? This is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. And now let's see if uh, Charlie K1GZL is on frequency to bring us up to date on the latest 40 meter band propagation. Charlie's QTH is up in uh, northern New Hampshire near the Canadian border. Uh, Charlie, uh, got a copy? Yes, uh, I sure do. Uh, direct uh, 25 over 9 uh, uh, there, uh, Jim, KC9VKV, K1G, that a beautiful copy. Roger, Roger, Charlie, will you peg me out and <laughs> blew my ears off before I could uh, ditch the pot, Roger? <laughs> yeah, well, we have a direct skip uh, right in there. Uh, that's uh, when the antenna here evidently works better. You get into summer conditions with a lot of high angles, and it may bounce three or four times before it even gets to you. But I think we're going straight through. Uh, straight through. Uh, you know, it's just absolutely incredible uh, copy. And here's how you sound on a recording here. A new visual input source indicator. This is the Friday afternoon Tesla Relay Network. You're just terrific, <laughs> terrific in here. Uh, right now, it's very warm. The normal high temperature now is 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, the temperature out is 37, 37. We were up to 39, no precipitation yet. I'm expecting a little light rain this evening, maybe uh, some snow, a light snow shower. Then tomorrow afternoon, we look like we may be getting into a moderate snowstorm, uh, a moderate snowstorm, and that will be on uh, January 4th, uh, and uh, that will uh, last through tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. 
assume uh, we may get three to five, maybe six inches of wet snow. Then we get something more robust that will hit us in the middle of next week. Uh, yeah, uh, very fine there, uh, Jim. As far as propagation goes, it's absolutely excellent. Uh, it was very good into Australia this morning. Uh, I was working VK3 uh, Mike Oscar about 55 miles northwest of Melbourne. And they were having, uh, uh, they had had temperatures up in the upper, uh, uh, the upper 90s, about 98 or 9 uh, Fahrenheit, or about 35 or 36 uh, Celsius. And uh, I asked him if they were bothered by all the smoke and the fires down there, and he says not at his QTH, uh, but there are many, many areas uh, north and west of him. Uh, that have been just devastated with awful fires down there. So, back over to you, uh, Jim, and I think propagation is very, very good, and I think we're working you directly on the F layer, and there may not directly on the F layer be any uh, uh, sporadic E in there, E in there, uh, K Z and an L. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, I just uh, zinged around the uh, selector, and uh, Rochester, Atlanta, and uh, Arlington are doing quite well with your signal this afternoon, as well as <laughs> our two local receivers, the 7300 and the uh, 990, are uh, at least you're 15 over on on those. I was just curious. Now you've been, you know, been working Australia, and um, obviously they have quite warm temperatures. Have you noticed any uh, s signal propagation? differences between the temperatures of the uh, remote stations coming in? Uh, no, which uh, which uh, remote stations, uh, uh, Jeff? Well, primarily your Australian contacts. I was just curious if uh, they seem to come in better when they have warm weather on their side. Uh, no, I don't think the weather has anything to do uh, with the, uh, the propagation. I don't think so. Uh, uh, because, you know, the weather only goes up uh, just so many miles, uh, up to three uh, to five miles, once in a while, seven or eight, if you get a high thunderstorm. Uh, you asked me a question a week ago, uh, what was the difference in temperature from Colebrook, a thousand feet lower, and uh, up here, and I forgot to answer that correctly, uh, and generally about three degrees, but it could be four to six degrees, and I'll explain why in two cases. Uh, air coming downhill uh, from higher elevation heats up a little faster, uh, a little extra uh, faster due to compression. Uh, and, of course, uh, in the valley location, uh, the air is coming down. Uh, also, if the air is uh, very cold and dry, uh, it's about... Uh, one degree every 200 feet, every 200 uh, feet. Uh, however, uh, if it's uh, raining or snowing, uh, it generally can be uh, around 400 feet per degree. So uh, that itself uh, would make a difference between rain and snow. If it's 31 and a half and uh, snowing here, it could be 33 and a half or 34. But then again, uh, if you add the compression coming down uh, to the valley floor, you can add another degree on that. So that was a question you asked, and I forgot to answer it last week, uh, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, you know the uh, difference between, obviously, uh, HF and uh, UHF and VHF uh, is uh, that normally uh, UHF, VHF moves uh, by ground, whereas HF moves by sky waves. And uh, we spent uh, two or three years uh, working a VHF uh, on our building Yagi antennas, and uh, notice the uh, propagation on VHF uh, tended to follow certain um, uh, channels in the in the uh, um, well the, the direction you know you can see uh, propagation on um, uh, 
QRZ uh, where, you know, they'll have uh, blobs of uh, uh, high degrees of uh, propagation for VHF. And uh, by and large, those are are true, and we would uh, follow those pretty religiously. Uh, we would work uh, a lot of uh, repeaters, uh, maybe three, four, five hundred miles uh, distant by paying attention to uh, the uh, ground propagation of uh, VHF. Roger? Yeah, I'm not as familiar with VHF uh, operation, uh, but you get a lot of uh, temperature inversion. Uh, if you get the right temperature inversion, uh, that can uh, act as a bit of uh, a bounce, a bit of a bounce and give you a little bit more. Now, there goes my voice. Uh, a little bit more of a uh, uh, distance, a little more of a, uh, just a, 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 you know, a difference. Uh, and uh, the, the, the ground wave, it will extend it out uh, by a little bit of ducting, bouncing off the lower, uh, the lower uh, levels. Uh, it's fascinating, but I never did get into that, nor did I ever get into uh, moan bounce, uh, into moan bounce, which I think is incredible. And when you stop and think about uh, the tremendous difference between here and the moon, what, 240,000 miles and the same all the way back, and having a signal uh, hit an object like the moon uh, and have that bounce all the way back again, and here you're just hitting rock up again, and here you're just hitting rock up there and bouncing it back. So, you know, it's all fascinating, and uh, also on experimentation with antennas, it's always it's funny, uh, not funny, but it's always exciting to see, to see what uh, you can come up with, and of course, always, always, you should use a reference antenna to see if you have gained whatever, even on another band, if you can see the gain over that reference antenna and cut and try. And sometimes the darnest antennas I put up, I thought were flops, were great. And I thought, oh, this, this is going to knock them dead. And they were terrible, Jim. Go ahead. Oh, Roger. Yeah, I have uh, uh, just an old saying, you know, that uh, I, I don't ever get rid of any of the old antennas uh, because I always use them as references to be sure that I'm heading in a better direction than where I was. And without a reference, you, you, you're lost because you, don't, you can't really say for sure. But if you have your old antennas still intact and use uh, uh, A-B uh, comparisons, you can readily see uh, over a period of uh, days and weeks uh, just how well or uh, uh, not <laughs> that you're doing with your new antenna. So just for that reason, I always keep Keep the old antenna up, Roger. I always keep the old antenna up, Roger. Oh yeah, uh, that that, uh, that is true. You're right on the right on the horn with that one, uh, Jim. Uh, well, look, uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to be on next week. Next week, you will see uh, what happened. By the way, we've had 76 inches of snow for the season so far, and uh, we probably have. Uh, the 11 to 17, or well, 8 to uh, 17 inches on the level ground here, but it does vary. It does vary because of the winds uh, we get up here. But last year at this time, we had far, far more snow on the ground than we have at present. Jim, thank you so much. I don't want to uh, tie you up there. There is probably many stations, since you're hearing the FDRs even closer in, uh, to me, evidently there will be a lot of areas or people uh, in the uh, in the skip zone. But uh, you have a fabulous signal, many peaks, 20, 25 over nine, and I'm resonating down the band about uh, 35, uh, almost 40 uh, kc, and my loading is down uh, up on this frequency. But a great uh, Jim, and I certainly hope you keep up the good work. And you're a great help, a great help to those that want to find out what is going on with their rigs, new rigs, and uh, uh, different microphones, and uh, so on. It's exciting. It's all part of the hobby. I'm not very good uh, uh, mechanically or uh, uh, electronically, uh, but uh, my my antennas, and uh, see if I cannot get out of the backyard. <laughs> Always a pleasure, KC9VKV. 
Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, let's see. I was copying uh, Rochester, New York, uh, SDR there for the longest time, and you were you were a good 10 uh, to 12 dB over their local noise level. Then I went to my local receivers, and you took my head off again. So must have been uh, 20 overs on uh, the uh, 7300 and the 990. So a great, a great signal from those uh, uh, beautiful antennas you have up on the hill. So we'll say threes, Charlie, and uh, you have a, a great. Uh, afternoon and a beautiful weekend coming up and appreciate uh, uh, checking in uh, threes that way. Uh, this is KC9 VKV and this is the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network uh, and uh, we are recording now live till 5 so if you have a radio you want to check out give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days so when you go to YouTube just do a call letter search for KC9 VKV that will take you to our QSO VLOG page and on that page you'll be looking uh, today for uh, an air check called My Group Air Check 010320. My Group Air Check 1320. This is KC9 VKV listening. Ah, uh, Victor Echo 3. I come back with a call sign again, please, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Jim. It's uh, Victor Echo 3, Papa Charlie Papa, Rob in uh, Inver here in Ontario. Uh, roger, Roger. Uh, up towards Ontario, is that a Roger? We are on the shores of uh, Lake Huron. Uh, we are on the shores of uh, Lake Huron, uh, about uh, two and a half hours northwest of the city of Toronto. We've talked uh, quite a few times. I'm usually checking in from the mobile, but I'm at home today. QSL. Uh, roger, Roger. There, uh, the other station checking in. Another station, uh, standby, please. Uh, this is uh, KC9 VKV, and this is the QSV Log Network. Uh, we'll uh, be uh, up in Canada for just a little while, so uh, stand by. Uh, Canada, what was the name again, please? So, uh, stand by. Uh, Canada, what was the name again, please? Uh, yeah, the name here is Rob Roger Oscar Baker, QSO. Roger, Rob, a beautiful sound. Uh, uh, what radio? A beautiful sound. Uh, uh, what radio? I'm running a Kenwood uh, TS850, and I recently uh, refurbished my old uh, uh, D104 desk mic. I took the guts out of it and replaced it with a Mucktret uh, condenser uh, cartridge in the head kissel. Ah, yes. <laughs> a beautiful, a great decision, a wise decision also, Roger. Great decision, a wise decision also, Roger. Yeah, yes, uh, well, the old uh, crystal mic uh, wasn't working uh, properly, and uh, the, the amplifier uh, uh, portion of it uh, wasn't either, so I just decided uh, I'll break, breathe some life back into it by putting the uh, Electret uh, cartridge in the head, and uh, it seems to uh, be getting some uh, some good audio uh, checks uh, back from other uh, people. Just uh, wanted to check in with the uh, with the king of uh, audio checks and uh, see how it uh, sounded down your way, QSL. Yes, uh, Rod, uh, beautiful sound. Now, did you have D? DC on your uh, mic from that radio? DC on your uh, mic from that radio? Uh, there is DC available from the radio, but uh, I use the 9 volt battery uh, that was in the base uh, for, for powering the, uh, the carriage. Uh, the radio here is a Kenwood uh, TS850 QSL. Uh, Roger, and uh, so uh, I, I take it that that uh, D104 was a powered microphone, is that a Roger? That uh, D104 was a powered microphone, is that a Roger? Uh, yeah, QSL, yeah, it was a TUG-8 stand, so it had the preamp built into the base. Uh, Roger, and you're running through the, uh, using the preamp with your Electret cartridge? The, uh, using the preamp with your Electret cartridge? Uh, no, no, the Electret cartridge is uh, directly uh, into the radio, no, nothing in between. Ah, very good, very good. Well, sounds beautiful. Uh, what uh, kind of EQ did you uh, have to crank in, or did you? What kind of EQ did you uh, have to crank in, or did you? Oh, there's no EQ on this radio. It's uh, uh, I've got uh, a processor and a mic gain. That's the only thing. Uh, I've got the processor engaged and set about three, and the mic gain uh, is also set uh, between three and four. ALC bouncing up uh, into the um, into uh, two thirds and three quarter scale QSL. Oh, Roger. Well, I mean, you couldn't have gotten a better curve if you had a ten band EQ uh, shaping it into the radio, Roger. EQ uh, shaping it into the radio, Roger. Yeah, I can speed with the right uh, with the right signal, I guess. But uh, this is a wide range uh, uh, carriage. I think it covered uh, from 10, uh, 10 hertz up to uh, uh, up to uh, to uh, uh, 
up to uh, 50 kilohertz or something like that. So pretty broad range uh, cartridge QSL. Uh, roger that. Roger that. Yeah. Uh, th- sometimes uh, those uh, electric cartridges can uh, reproduce uh, frequencies down in the lower ebbs that uh, one might want to just as soon uh, uh, forget. I have a, a CRISPR, a, um, uh, a passive CRISPR that I use uh, quite often on the Electret microphone. And this has to do with, um, you know, uh, phono, um, uh, phono plugs. They have a, a plastic shield, a plastic body that goes over the phono plug. Well, I take that plastic body off, and now I've got me a... a you know, a, a jobber that I can take a razor blade and I can cut it uh, about uh, at the two-thirds point. So I have this uh, cylinder that is exactly the size of the electret cartridge. So I can put the electret cartridge uh, inside that cylinder and it uh, sticks out in front of the microphone about, uh, no, not quite a half an inch, uh, you know, maybe uh, a quarter or a little bit more. And what that does, it tailors the audio going into the electret uh, uh, pickup and it boosts the uh, top end. Maybe uh, you might be a plus uh, six or seven dB at uh, 10 kc with that crisper on roger at, uh, 10 kc with that crisper on roger uh, yeah just oh yeah i can see how that would work it uh, becomes a, a bit of a passive filter uh, uh, and uh, rejects the uh, uh, the longer um, the longer wavelength of the lower uh, frequency QSL. Roger, well, I'm glad to know what I was doing, because <laughs> uh, I, I, you're listening to one right now. This is uh, Electret uh, cartridge with uh, that uh, CRISPR on it. Roger, Roger. That uh, CRISPR on it. Roger, Roger. Yep, yes, out. Well, bring me okay, and that the audio sounds good, and uh, I don't want to hold you up too long, because I know you probably got lots of guys that are lining up to, uh, to have a chat with you, so I do appreciate uh, your time again this afternoon. And I uh, look forward to uh, listening to uh, the recording on uh, YouTube in the next couple of days. So 7-3, uh, uh, Jim, for the afternoon, and uh, thank you very much uh, for doing what you do. Uh, KC9, VKB, V3, PCP. Roger, Roger, Rob. And also, uh, we first, well, second uh, Friday that we've been using our source uh, indicator on screen so folks can keep track of uh, my uh, comings and goings on my sixth position rotary input selector. I've been bouncing around between the uh, 7300, the uh, FT990, and uh, some of the uh, SDRs. So if uh, you want to hear what your radio sounds like under multiple situations, uh, if you go to YouTube uh, and uh, do a call letter search for KC9VKV, and uh, then look for uh, Mike Repair Check uh, 1320. Uh, that is today's date, 1320 Mike Repair Check. On the, uh, I call it a search uh, that will uh, bring up uh, this uh, air check today, and uh, you'll be able to uh, check out uh, the comings and goings on our uh, remote uh, indicator. Roger. Oh, uh, yeah, just all, yeah. I can uh, tell when you're using a. Uh an SDR receiver because there's a slight delay in, uh, in you coming back to me and I know from uh, listening to previous uh, air checks that uh, uh, the, the Milford PA SDR is typically what you listen to me uh, through when I'm mobile at least anyway and uh, when I'm mobile at least anyway and uh, the delay uh, on it so um, anyway thank you very much again and, uh, I'll, let you get, and uh, I'll let you get back to the other station there KC9 VKV V3 PCP Roger, Roger, Rob. Uh, Rochester was doing uh, the best uh, job today, and uh, Arlington was doing uh, fairly well. Atlanta was uh, coming and going, and Milford wasn't, uh, uh, didn't seem to be up around where it normally is. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, three's up that way, sir. Stay warm, and we'll uh, catch you next Friday if you get a chance. Drop by. Uh, this is KC9 VKV, and this is the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give me a shout. Kilo November 4, what's the rest? Kilo November 4, Tango Oscar X ray in Florida. Over. Roger, Roger, Florida. Uh, what's the name down there? Uh, Jim, the name is Russ of uh, Romeo Uniform Sierra Sierra. Roger, Roger, Russ, and what radio are you running today, sir? Uh, an ICOM 7610, over.
Roger, on the 7610, I just went to Atlanta, uh, SDR, and it was a little, little bit uh, better, so I'm uh, running right now uh, on the Atlanta SDR, Roger. The Atlanta SDR, Roger. Hey, that's a Roger, uh, uh, Jim. Uh, over. Roger, Roger, now, uh, how, uh, how long have you had your 7610? Oh, Roger that. Well, uh, gosh, have you played with uh, Drive at all? Uh, gosh, have you played with uh, Drive at all? Uh, on my mic gain, I have 35%. Uh, how am I coming across, Jim? Uh, well, I uh, could do a little uh, fattening there. Uh, I would suggest uh, engaging your uh, compressor at a 3. Uh, get that compressor online at about a 3, Roger. Yeah, three does uh, just uh, perfect. Uh, when you get beyond a three, you start uh, sucking up uh, trash between words, which you don't want to do. So uh, a three does that, Roger. I mean, three is just perfect, Roger. Uh, how is it, how am I sounding now, Jim? Over. Looking pretty good. Now, what I would like for you to do is uh, bring up your ALC. And uh, with mic gain in hand, adjust your ALC to where you're running uh, mid-scale to two-thirds. Adjust your ALC to where you're running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. to two-thirds. Roger. That's all Roger. Uh, it looks like I'm running about uh, somewhere within uh, 50 to 70 percent. How, how does that sound, Jim? Over. Roger, Roger. Well, the sweet spot we're looking for is that area between mid-scale and two-thirds. That is the sweet area, right uh, smack dab between mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Yes, sir. Your EQ is just fine. Now, uh, what I want you to do is uh, you have uh, a button on your uh, radio called uh, Quick. It's on the uh, left-hand side of your radio. Button called Quick. Roger. Yeah, that's a Roger, Jim. All right. Uh, push Quick. Push Quick, and you'll arrive at Drive. Push Quick, and you'll arrive at Drive. Roger. All right, what is the setting on drive? What is the setting on drive? I got drive gain at 50. Should I change that to 30? Over? Uh, negative, no. Uh, I increase uh, drive to uh, 65. Uh, drive uh, to 65, Roger. Over. All right. Now you're you're very loud, but but uh, I caution you that you you need to stay at all times on access to your microphone. Stay on your microphone on access uh, all the time because uh, with uh, what Quick does, it uh, it uh, decreases your dynamic range and fattens your signal quite a bit, and it's going to try to keep that signal fat regardless of whether you're on mic or not. And if you're not on mic, uh, it will pull up what is there, which uh, may be minus any sibilance or articulation, and you could become uh, muffly. So just stay on mic and. And uh, that will really, uh, it's just a beautiful sound, but stay on mic, Roger. Hey, that's a Roger, Jim. I just want to let you know that I am not using the, uh, the mic that came with the 7610. I'm using a Heil uh, ICM BG, the gold edition. I think it's like a $120 amplifier. Over. Over. Uh, it's a $125 mic. Over.
<laughs> Roger, Roger, sounds good, sounds good. And uh, you know, uh, when you uh, replace that handheld mic, uh, that is an electric handheld microphone, and it was specially uh, designed for the uh, uh, 7610 and the 7300. It has uh, just a beautiful top end uh, uh, articulation to it uh, because it is uh, an electric uh, condenser microphone. And uh, usually you have to uh, exceed the speed limit almost in top end EQ when you replace that with a dynamic microphone, Roger. That with a dynamic microphone, Roger. The microphone I replaced, I have a, it's, a, it's a Heil TM a BG, it's a high-performance microphone for ICOM-only transceivers. Over, Jim. Uh, Roger, does that mean that it's electret? Yeah, it does sound like an electret. That's why, <laughs> that's why you lucked out when you swap that, uh, swap that hand mic for that mic, because it's the same kind of mic. They're both uh, electret mics. So just, uh, just a beautiful job. Good thinking there. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Well, I've gone around here uh, a couple of times uh, with uh, the uh, the SDRs and my local uh, antennas, and uh, seems to be Atlanta is probably the hottest uh, SDR at the moment. Roger. Roger. Uh, I think uh, you know, so. Uh, what am I coming in like about five seven, five eight? Cause I'm using, uh, Dipole antenna, 20 meter dipole. It's called a Colini array. It's a, an MFJ. Uh, gosh, uh, you uh, just kind of uh, quit there. <laughs> uh, I'm copying you. If I did not have uh, side side adjacent channel uh, garbage, uh, I would probably be copying you at about uh, 10 over, Roger. 10 over my noise level. 10 over, actually, 10 over Atlanta's noise level. But I do have uh, adjacent channel trash. And uh, so uh, with the trash in there, you're about a 5 over the noise level, Roger. Roger, Roger, Russ, uh, three that way, sir, and uh, you have a great uh, uh, afternoon and a beautiful weekend. Uh, thanks for checking in. At uh, uh, 7610 really sounds sounds beautiful. I'd love to uh, accentuate the positive with drive, though. That just uh, takes your, your uh, dynamic range from a three to about a two. And uh, so it just it really is a fattening uh, process. And uh, I will, uh, I have a, um, well, we did some extensive tests with Drive. If I find out what the, um, what the number for that program is, I'll, uh, I'll bring it uh, up to everyone's attention so they can check it out. This is where we really work that Drive all the way to 100%, and you'll just be amazed at, at what happens at 100%. It's not anything that I would want to run very long, but it's just, uh, uh, um, just amazing that you can actually crunch the dynamic range down to about half a dB. I'm looking at my view meter on this test uh, when we did it, and uh, instead of my view meter bouncing around uh, at uh, maximum 100% uh, on drive uh, on the 7610, my uh, view meter was just uh, bouncing between half a dB and zero level. So it just looks like a plate uh, voltmeter.
So anyway, threes that way, and have a great weekend. This is KC9 VKV, and today, and for the next few weeks, we'll be conducting a sidewalk survey, an AV receiver test between our normal, uh, uh, highly modified Yezu FT990, and the newer digital influenced ICOM 7300. There will be a few anomalies. During the test, our 990 receiver will be running a resonant dipole with zero reflected wave, and the 7300 will be running two co-phase 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas. All transmissions will be from our regular FT-990. Uh, this is KC-9 VKV and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network, and we're listening. Just caught the tail end of sun call sign and come back and try it again. The tail end of sun call sign and come back and try it again. I got November 8 to try the rest. I got November 8 to try the rest. Copied the last part is uniform now. <laughs> uh, I still need uh, the, in, the in between, so just give me the call sign a couple of times, slowly, phonetically. Roger, Roger. A couple of times, slowly, phonetically. Roger, Roger. Okay, I'm on a better uh, situation now, so I, if you would give it to me one more time, uh, I, I won't ask again, please. I got you there. I got you there on the 7300, sir. Whereabouts are you? Roger, you're in Michigan, Upper Peninsula. I'm not sure exactly where that is, uh, but uh, uh, what type of antenna are you running, sir? I'm running a, a, a dipole cut for 75 meters. A dipole cut for 75, using, uh, uh, 75 meters using a Johnson matchbox. Uh, Roger, Roger. Now, I want you to know that that's a really hard match on an antenna uh, uh, tuner. I have done that before, and uh, it does. Uh, <laughs> it was a challenge for my uh, tuner to uh, make that happen, but uh, uh, you know, I'm wishing you uh, better luck because I, I think I was probably dissipating about uh, 500 watts uh, in the antenna tuner, Roger. Roger, Roger. What's the name there, sir? Yeah, uh, gosh, uh, you're, you're right in my noise level. And I've got somebody that's uh, like a, a KC off or two KC off. I don't know. You know, uh, we've been uh, on the air now over half an hour. And uh, for somebody to start a QSO uh, uh, a couple of clicks off uh, or even a click off, I'm not sure what it is. But uh, we got them. Anyway, uh, try the name again, please, sir. Roger, I sure would too. <laughs> I'm trying to find uh, uh, something that uh, either through an SDR or through uh, you know one of my antennas and one of my radios that I could get a better copy on you. Uh, but uh, tell you what, give me about uh, 10 seconds and tell me about your antenna system, Roger. Uh, seems to. I'm copying you on Atlanta now. So, uh, real quick, what is the name again? Roger Hal, got that. Hey, <laughs> yay! And uh, what radio are you running, sir? Copy ICOM 7300. Roger, Roger. 
All right, let me see what we can do on that 7300. Uh, let's see if we can fatten it up. Uh, do you have your compressor in line and add a three? Compressor in line and add a three, Roger. All right, I want to uh, adjust the mic gain a little bit hotter to where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Adjust your mic gain to uh, where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. The ideal position is that exactly halfway between half mid-scale and two-thirds. That is the sweet spot, halfway between uh, uh, mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. All right, uh, you should, uh, if you uh, bring up your ALC, uh, and when you transmit, you'll lose it, but just, uh, I think you just tap it again and it'll come back, Roger. Uh, Roger that, that's, that's good, and I found a pretty clean place. Uh, tell me about your antenna system again, real quick. Johnson matchbox with open ladder line. Roger. Roger, Roger. Now you're real close on EQ. Do you know how to get to your uh, tone control? Uh, stand by, sir. Frequency is in use. Yeah, hit menu, um, settings. Uh, sideband, um, tone control. I think he's running narrow there, um, I think he's running narrow. Okay. Uh, how do you have a copy? Uh, no, Harold, uh, uh, Hal, I'm sorry, Hal, do you have a copy? All right. Uh, do you know how to set your bandwidth? Do you know check your bandwidth and make sure th uh, that you're 2100 to 2900. There's three places that you have to uh, check to be sure that your band pass is uh, 100 to 2900. Roger. Uh, comment. Go comment. Yeah, it's uh, Vito, VA3, VMD. Is he running the 7300? Yes, sir. Uh, just tell him to hit the function button. If he looks at the bottom of the 7300 screen, you'll see the menu button and the function button. If he hits the function button, uh, he'll get a bunch of icon squares that show up. That will say TBW on the second row, TBW for transmit bandwidth, and it will tell him whether he's running narrow, wide, or mid. Uh, how did you copy that? I don't have, <laughs> I lost my copy on him. Yeah, yeah, he's wide now there, he's wide. Uh, good, uh, so uh, now I go to your uh, tone control, um, backtrack uh, to your uh, tone control, and uh, let me know what your settings are on tone control. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, how, um, if you hit the menu button, hit the menu button on the bottom of the, uh, the screen. You'll see a black menu button. Hit the menu button, and once you uh, hit the menu button, you'll see two rows of icons. You want to hit the set button, the SET button, which is uh, the, on the bottom row on the far right. It's the set button. So you hit the set button. And once you go into the set button, you look for tone control slash TBW. Tone control slash TBW. Uh, if you hit the tone control slash TBW, uh, it will show you tone control RX or TX. RX or TX. 
you want to hit TX. You want to hit TX. Uh, and once you do that, you want to hit SSV, a single sideband, SSV, and that will show you your uh, bass and your treble. Roger? I can't copy him if he's, if he's in there. Uh, he, uh, he was telling me about uh, what was his voice on this TX3, TX3. Uh, so now uh, on, your, on your menu, uh, uh, you need to get into the uh, sideband TX uh, uh, parameter. Hit the menu button. When you hit the menu button on the bottom of your screen, menu button, you have to hit the set button. Did you find that? Oh, yes, I see this. Okay, so once you find the set button, uh, you've got to get back into the menu because every time you key up, it's going to take you out. Uh, once you hit the set button, you need to find tone control. Tone control, did you find that? I think I have the solution. Okay, go ahead. It's all yours. I'm sorry to jump in there. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. You, <laughs> I haven't built my cheat sheet for the 7300. I should have that now that I, I have one to actually work with, but I haven't had a chance. Uh, Hal, do you have a copy? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to give you some homework. I'm going to give you some uh, homework uh, when you've, uh, later on when you find out uh, everything and how to get there. Uh, I want you to increase your treble EQ by 2 dB, two clicks. I want you to increase your treble uh, EQ two clicks from where it is. Roger, Roger. Okay, treble to 2 dB. Roger, increase uh, treble two clicks from where it is, and I think you'll be in good shape then, Roger. Yeah, and uh, so I would say, you know, consult the book, man. That, <laughs> for, for my personal taste, I think sometimes the 7300 is just so menu-driven. It's just pathetic. I mean, you would think uh, a state-of-the-art radio would uh, be more graceful and not be so heavily menu-led. Uh, uh, they could afford a few uh, bells and whistles on the outside rather than uh, making you work deep within the bowels. Uh, through a uh, memory and the, you know particularly this is concerning when you're first trying to learn a radio and the second aspect of that is to have this this menu that you've striven for to get to to uh, when you start to do something all of a sudden it decides it's going to go home you know what is what's up with that I want that menu if I go to the effort of pulling that menu up to somewhere I want that menu to stay exactly where it is until I release it yes I found that to be true I found that to be true and I'm old radio I'm old radio so I thought this is quite complicated but I'll try to get the treble up to 2 dB, and I didn't get all your call. I have Kilo uh, Charlie 9. What was the rest? Uh, the call is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo, Victor. And I repeat, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo, Victor. Roger. I got the Kilo, uh, Victor, Kilo uh, Victor. And uh, what's your name? Name here is Jim, Juliet India Mike, and uh, we're located uh, near Louisville, Kentucky. We're just across the Ohio River from Louisville. I can see downtown Louisville from here, uh, although I am in Indiana technically, Roger. I'm going to try to uh, get the treble up 2 dB, and I hope to catch you again and see how things improve. So I'm not going to take it because conditions are not the best, but I hope to work you again to see what we can do with the 7300. So 7-3, thanks for your help. And I'm you. Happy New Year.
Roger Howell, Happy New Year's to you, sir, yes. And uh, uh, if you go to YouTube, uh, do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. We're running about 880 QSO recordings at the moment, but you'll be looking for one in particular, and it's called My Group Air Check 1320. Today's date, My Group Air Check 1320. 20. Roger. It was my wife. I'm sorry, repeat again, Hal? Yes, you were saying that the men that the look was under my wife. If you go to YouTube, go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for an air check called My Group Air Check 1320. My Group Air Check 1320. Roger. Okay, 1320, my group. Okay, well, I ain't gonna hold it. I'll try to get you again on when conditions are better. But thanks for the help, and I'll try to get the treble and look for that. Get it uh, come up at 7-3 there. Thanks. Roger, Roger. Three's that way, sir. Thanks for checking in. If you find everything, then give us a shout next Friday, and we'll uh, uh, compare notes and see how everything is going. Uh, this is KC9VKV, Friday afternoon QSO VLOC Network. My name is Jim, KC9VKV, and I'm better known in some circles as Dr. VKV. And we are recording now live till 5, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. KC9VKV. Hey, Jim, our comment, VA3VMD. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry uh, by, by the way, my apologies for jumping in there with, uh, with Al. Uh, it's uh, your good friend Vito from uh, Unionville, Ontario, just north of Toronto. I just wanted to say uh, good afternoon to you, Happy New Year, and uh, sorry for kind of jumping in there. Uh, my apologies. Hey, listen, man, you saved my life. I, I uh, you know, have been meaning to do a cheat sheet for the 7300, and I just haven't had a chance, man. I've just been, you know, doing all kinds of crazy things like this uh, visual input selector and, uh, uh, you know, just uh, running, uh, running crazy. But I suggest anybody that has a 7300, uh, a recent edition, that they sit down and make themselves a cheat sheet that uh, how to get to about five or six uh, things that uh, might be important for them and how to how to get there uh, roger yeah very very good jim very good well listen I, i've had this training for four years in june so i, I i'm kind of dr 7300 here on this side too so <laughs> anyway listen no problem uh, we'll let you catch a few more uh, happy new year to you my friend and always a pleasure and enjoy listening to you uh, va3 uh, victor mike delta up in unionville ontario have a great day jim and uh, thanks for letting me jump in Roger, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you want a uh, radio that you want to get an air check uh, and uh, be able to listen to it on YouTube, give me a shout. KC9VKV. KC9VKV. This is KC9VSW. Hey, Bravo. Niner, Golf, November, Bravo. Uh, KB9, one more time uh, on the call sign slowly, phonetically. Bravo. Golf November Bravo. Roger, what's the name? Uh, name is uh, Central Wisconsin. And uh, we're having a good day here, and I have a uh, old uh, Kenwood, and I had a report that it was uh, a little bit short and signal. I was wondering how it was coming in at your end. Uh, and you had a report that it was, uh, what was the signal? Uh, I had a report that the signal was uh, distorted. Uh, it sounds like it might be just a f tad high. It sounds like your frequency might be just a tad high. I would uh, look around and see if uh, you have a clarifier. If you have a clarifier on that radio, make sure that the clarifier is off or at zero, zero, zero. Roger. Uh, roger that. Okay, I took a note on that, and uh, I don't really know if I have one. I thought maybe my mic uh, gain was too high or something, and uh, 
Uh, the frequency is still in question. It might be just a tad high in frequency, so that's why I said check to, to uh, see if your clarifier might be on. Sometimes those clarifiers do uh, jack the uh, transmit frequency around in addition to uh, the receive. So um, just uh, if you do have a clarifier, make sure it's off or that it's at zero, zero, zero. Roger. Uh, Roger that. Thanks for the report, and uh, we'll check that out. So this is KB9 TNT. Roger, and I did thought uh, I did think uh, I heard uh, just a, a little uh, anomaly there one time. Uh, uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system, and, and let me hear you for a minute, Roger. Uh, Roger, this is, K, uh, this is KB9 GNC. My antenna is on uh, a uh, 40 meter dipole. It's up about uh, 30 feet, and I have about Oh, maybe 60 feet of lead-in wire coming into the house. Uh, roger that, roger that. And what's the name again, please? Uh, name is Jerry, Juliet Echo, Romeo, Romeo, Yankee. Roger, Jerry. And what's your location? Uh, I'm in uh, central Wisconsin, Rudolph, Wisconsin, near uh, Wisconsin Rapids. Roger. And what was your radio again, please? Uh, it's a PS. 120S. TS120S? Yeah, Jerry, did you say TS120S? I'm sorry, I doubled. Uh, Jerry, did you say your radio was a TS120S? All right, sir. All right. Uh, yeah, the only thing I can see, uh, your EQ sounds uh, pretty good. Uh, the only thing I can see is that your frequency, uh, transmit frequency, might be slightly high. Not enough to, uh, you know, bring down the walls, but uh, just to uh, note. Uh, and, uh, you know, you might want to uh, uh, do something about that or, or not. Uh, just a very slight amount of uh, uh, too, too high frequency, Roger. Roger that. We'll check that out. I have some uh, radio friends that are pretty up on this stuff, so I'll confer with them and see if they can figure it out. Roger, roger. And the word is uh, slightly high. <laughs> Quote, slightly, in quote, high. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for checking in. Uh, and uh, we'll say threes for now, Jerry. And if you want to hear your radio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for one air check in particular, and it's called My Group Air Check 1320. My Group Air Check 1320. Roger. Uh, roger that. Uh, uh, roger, roger, Jerry. Three is that way, sir. You have a, a great uh, afternoon, beautiful weekend. And if you get a chance, uh, check back in with us uh, next Friday. We'd love to hear you. Uh, this is KC9 uh, VKV, and uh, today and for the next few weeks, we'll be conducting a sidewalk survey, an AB receiver test between our normal uh, modified Yezu FT990 and a newer digital influenced ICOM 7300. There will be a few anomalies during the test. Our 990 receiver will be running a resonant dipole with zero reflected wave, and the 7300 will be running two co-phase 10-foot vertical magnetic loop antennas. All transmissions will be from our regular FT-990. This is KC-9 VKV listening. Uh, W-4 Japan, Papa Delta. Quebec Kilo. W-4 uh, Japan, what was that? Uh, W-4 Japan, Papa Delta. JPD, Roger, Roger. What's the name there, sir?
Yeah, good, good afternoon. Uh, name is uh, Pete. Pete's the name. Uh, we're just outside of uh, Charlotte. Uh, you're 59 plus. Big signal. And I uh, uh, just wanted to get a recording here of the FTDX uh, 3000. Uh, go ahead. Well, as I <laughs> have to spend a little time writing the model number down there, but it's beautiful sound and radio, Pete. Yeah, well, good. You know, uh, with the uh, three band uh, uh, parametric EQ, uh, <laughs> you can catch yourself coming and going, if you know what I mean. So uh, uh, we just uh, kind of tuned it up and just wanted to see how it sounded. Uh, anyway, won't hold it. I know you got a lot of stations uh, calling, but uh, great signal. Uh, go ahead. Roger, Pete, looking at your uh, audio on a view meter right out of the, well, either the 7300 or the 990. I have a six-position uh, rotary selector, input selector, and uh, on that I have the 7300, the 990, and four uh, uh, SDR, internet uh, SDR receivers on it. And uh, looking at the uh, 7300 output on a view meter of your signal and uh, your um, repetitive 100% uh, 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 marker is just uh, beautiful. Beautiful. There's no, uh, almost no blow by. It just every peak comes comes to right to the uh, the zero uh, uh, place where I've uh, adjusted your uh, audio. So your limiter is just working beautiful. Ah, great. Well, I uh, certainly appreciate that. And uh, remind me, uh, what's your name? My name here is Jim Juliet India Mike, and we're located near Louisville, Kentucky, just across the Ohio River from Louisville. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good, Jim. Well, really appreciate. Uh, you're uh, looking at the signal like that, and uh, Happy New Year to you, and we'll let you run. And uh, see, uh, KC9 Victor, kilowatt Victor from uh, W4 Japan, Papa Delta. Roger, Roger, Pete, and we should be posting this up uh, to YouTube in the next couple of days. So if you go to YouTube in the next couple of days and do a call at a search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, uh, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page, and uh, you'll be looking for uh, an air check called My Group Air Check 1320. My Group Air Check 1320. Roger. Hey, Roger, got it all. Thanks a million. Beautiful signal, man. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, this is KC9 VKV3 to you, Pete. Uh, and if you get a chance, uh, check in next uh, Friday. We uh, love to hear folks uh, check back in. Uh, this is KC9 VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. Victor Echo 3 Station, come back with the rest of the call sign. Victor Echo 3 Station, come back with a call sign. Oh gosh, <laughs> you uh, faded out, uh, faded down quite a bit. Uh, come back again. I'm uh, set to copy you now. Uh, what? Uh, give me the the call sign again. That was uh, Doug, Roger. Hi, uh, Roger, Roger. All right. Uh, well, Mother Nature is uh, kind of uh, pulling our strings, uh, uh, but uh, you were on the rise last time I checked. Uh, uh, t uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system. Hi, uh, Roger. Okay, your signal RST here is, uh, you got a 5-9 signal on you, and it's uh, we're, uh, very, very good. Audio is excellent at my end, and uh, my G5RV, north-south, is the north-south orientation, and uh, it's up about 30 feet there. So uh, we're in Elliott Lake, Elliott Lake, Ontario, which is between Sudbury, Ontario, and Sault Ste. Marie. Back to you. Roger, Duggan, what radio are you running, sir? I'm running with an FT-991, an FT-991, the ASU. Uh, just running 100 watts. Roger, uh, I could uh, probably fatten your signal up a little bit if you would be interested. Uh, Roger, you want me to uh, turn the gain up a little bit on the mic? Well, uh, we start with the uh, compressor. I would engage the uh, compressor at about a 3, turn the compressor on, and uh, adjust it to about a 3 uh, input, Roger. 
Okay, we have the processor at uh, 330. The processor is at 30 on the 991. All right, that's uh, 30 out of 100, Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger. All right, then uh, move to your ALC. Uh, bring up your ALC meter uh, with your mic gain in hand and adjust your uh, ALC to where it's running mid-scale to two-thirds. Adjust your mic gain until your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger on that. Okay. Uh, just uh, got the ALC meter up here now and then mic gain. Okay, we'll just get to this. All right, and uh, go ahead and uh, check that a couple of times. You know, like I say, don't really uh, work your microphone like you're going to set a level. Just uh, talk into your microphone, work the microphone like you normally would at about the same level that you would, and just uh, simply kind of uh, adjust that mic gain uh, to where uh, the meter is running at mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger? Uh, Roger, Roger on that. Okay, well, but uh, mic gain on the radio is... Uh Roger. Now I would, uh, do you know where your EQ is, your equalization? Uh, roger, Roger. Can get to that too. Alright, uh, let's go to your EQ and uh, tell me what the readings are, uh, Roger. Uh, the EQ right now I have it turned off, so uh, I'll just turn it on. All right. Uh, I would increase your your treble control, your your top end. Uh, is that a, a three band EQ or what? Uh, Roger, it is, and I have to get to that through the menu. I'm, you, I heard you say that you do have the uh, 991 there, so you know what I have to do here to find it. <laughs> uh, would you happen to actually know what the number is uh, that I'm looking for on the menu? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I have a uh, I have a uh, 990. Now this is an an older Yezu 990. Roger, Roger. But it's uh, pretty highly modified, particularly in receive, very flat from 100 cycles to uh, in excess of uh, uh, 3K. So I can uh, very accurately uh, hear audio and uh, you know and uh, be able to figure out what we need to do. And uh, on your situation, uh, did you say you knew where EQ was? Okay, now this is not bandpass. Uh, you need to be in your bandpass. You need to be uh, 100 to 2900. In your bandpass, you want to be 100 to 2900. Roger. Uh, Roger, I understand what you're saying there. Okay, so I'm going to tie you up here. Okay, and I'll let you carry on with somebody else, and uh, they will. Uh, if the band is still holding up, I'll give you a shout back, and uh, once I find all this, I don't want to uh, tie up. There's other people waiting in the lineup here. And I appreciate very much what you've uh, told me so far. So we'll look up the settings, and uh, we'll kind of crank them just a wee bit, and especially on the treble. Okay, thank you very much. appreciate that. So we'll turn it back over to you, and uh, Happy New Year to you down there, and my friends. Roger, Doug. Uh, let me give you a heads up there. On a three-band EQ, I uh, always leave the mid-range flat. On a three-band EQ, always leave the mid, the middle mid-range control flat because what you want to do is you want to strive for balance and if you crank up the mid-range it's so much harder then for the top end and the bottom end to catch up to balance so if you leave your mid-range flat then it's um, a lot easier your your top and your bottom have much more uh, balanced control so say that your mid-range is flat adjust your top end uh, 2 dB uh, two clicks hotter, and uh, maybe one uh, one click uh, on the bottom end, forward, bu uh, pu push, plus um, one click uh, base uh, push. Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger. Yes, I understand what you're saying there. So uh, we will look into that and uh, say if the band is still holding up. 
Roger, Doug, three's that way, sir, and give me a shout back uh, later when you, uh, you find uh, where it is and uh, make those adjustments, and we'll see what it sounds like. Shit, sound great. This is KC9VKV, and we're running uh, now live till five uh, recording, so if you have a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We'll post this recording up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So when you go to YouTube, just do a call letter search for KC9VKV, and that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for one QSO Vlog entitled Mike Group Air Check 1320. That's uh, today's uh, date, Mike Group Air Check 1320. This is KC9 VKV listening. WA2, Mike with a kilo. Oh, what a beautiful audio, man. Oh, my God. Who is that uh, complimenting me? Who was that masked man who said we had good audio? This is WA2, Mike Rebecca Kilo. Roger, and what's the name there, sir? Hello, Jim. My name is Bob. I just had one general question. I don't know whether you can feel it or not. Ah, uh, gosh, I don't know. They don't call me Dr. VKV for nothing. Well, I was just got on uh, the band again after years and noticed a new phenomenon where apparently people, uh, I guess when they're tuning up their transmitter, they have it on uh, CW, and they sweep their high-power carrier across the band. Do you... I wondered why. Is this got oh, something to do with the new SDR spectrum displays or what? Uh, no, uh, probably what they're doing is uh, looking at their SWR. Uh, they're probably on the 100 watt scale looking at their SWR. And then they, they VFO across the band and watch their VFO uh, uh, SWR rise as they approach the uh, edges of the band. You know, uh, that's uh, as near as I can figure out what they're doing, Roger. Well, I guess different things annoy different people, but it kind of annoys me. It's, uh, but I guess that's the new, uh, new thing to do. Anyways, I'm going to let you go soon because you've got other customers. One last comment. You know, as an individual, you must have tremendous stamina and patience. <laughs> I don't know how you're able to uh, go on for as long as you do with all your uh, listeners. So thanks uh, for uh, the explanation, and I'll let you go to the next person. This is uh, WA2 Mike with Beck Kilo saying 73 to KC9 VKV. Thanks, Jim. Roger, Bob. Uh, just looking at your signal, uh, we could make you a lot fatter if you might be interested. Well, yeah, you know, uh, if you can keep going, I can keep going. <laughs> uh, it's a 7300, and as you... I missed the base setting though. Oh, you said you don't, you haven't really looked at a, set up your cheat sheet yet. But uh, I'm holding the microphone about, I'd say, six inches away. And uh, I've done most of the settings, you know, compression. I haven't looked at the ALC, uh, but I'm going to adjust that offline, you know, to your recommendations. What, what about the base? Well, uh, let's get your, what mic are you running? Uh, the OEM uh, manufacturer shipped mic uh, that comes with the uh, radio. It's the numbers on the back. Uh, and um, I've got a, um, I've got a new old um, Collins 30 L1 amp that I'm running now. So that's kind of new for me. 
300 worth of calculation. Roger, Bob. Okay, uh, that uh, microphone, what you need to do, the way you should work that, that hand mic, is pull it to the side of your mouth to where it actually touches the side of your mouth and talk across it. Pull it, uh, if you're using your right hand, pull it to the side of your cheek and talk right across it. Actually, contact with your, your cheek on the side and talk right across it. Roger. Wow. You're kidding. Uh, I can see it's making a difference possibly here, yeah. Um, I didn't realize that, Jim. Yeah, it, I've got it close to my cheek and to the left side. I'm holding it with my left hand. All right. Now, uh, what I want you to do is be sure that your compressor is engaged at about a three. Engage your compressor at about a three. Check. All right, then move to your ALC, and uh, with the mic gain in hand, adjust your ALC level to where it's running mid-scale to two-thirds. As you uh, continue working that, you should always work that microphone just like I told you, Roger. Okay, Jim. Uh, oh, the AC, the ALC is way down, way down. Um, uh, I think I've got it. Uh, yeah, I can see the ALC scale here, and uh, it's not registering very high at all. Um, I can turn, I'll turn the mic gain up here. It's at 50% already, but here goes some more mic gain in case, and then you can advise me from there. Uh, now I'm up to 70. Oh, that registers higher for sure. I'm all the way up to full, it won't go any higher, oh wait a minute, yes it will, uh, okay the mic gain is now at, uh, what's it say, I should wear my glasses, it's all the way up to 90% now. All right, uh, I'd pull it back to 60. I'd pull it back to 60. And I'll tell you what, you've got a, a watt meter. Uh, are you, you're running a, 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 a PA, Roger? Yes, sir. Uh, I've got a uh, Telstar. Telstar uh, A2. What is it? Let me read it here. AT2KD. And uh, uh, on CW, you know, it's running around 500 watts, uh, I think. Okay. Uh, well, what I'm saying is you've got a watt meter tied to the output of that, Roger? Yeah, I, I can read the watts. All right. What I want you to do is put that watt meter on PEP. It has uh, two scales, RMS and PEP. I want you to put that watt meter on uh, PEP, and I want you to look at that watt meter uh, and start looking at it as a VU meter it, uh, as you speak. And uh, what you want to do is, with your voice as much as possible, keep that uh, meter in the sweet spot. And that has to do with the uniformity of your speech and the rate of your speech. Uh, because if you talked like that, the meter would fall down all the time. But if you have a, a, a regular cadence to your speech, then uh, that meter will you know, be inclined to stay in the sweet spot if you are running uh, you know, mic level uh, as such that your AOC is indicating mid-scale to two-thirds. Just watch your watt meter and try to keep it in the sweet spot with your voice. Roger? Okay, Jim. Uh I'm not sure on the watt meter what you meant by uh, sweet spot, but yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, it's now on the peak, it's up around, you know, staying up around 400 watts. Mary had a little lamb, or its fleece was white as snow. Yeah, or, or a reasonable facsimile thereof. But uh, uh, just uh, be, you know, it's going to take you. Uh, it's going to take you a while to really adjust to that. It took me uh, over 50 years 
<laughs> I've been looking at view meters for 50 years, so you know they they come now pretty second uh, nature to me. But uh, you know, just watch your uh, your watt meter in the uh, and use the PEP so it moves uh, fairly quickly. And uh, what you want to do is try to keep it uh, at that uh, sweet spot uh, on the meter as uh, as best as possible. There you will. You know, it'll take you a while to get used to that, but uh, you will have a much uh, fatter signal, Roger. Okay, Jim. Um, I'm uh, an old timer, uh, and uh, I know what you mean by a, a VU meter, a voice unit. I guess it's called. Uh, I, I, I'll have to do my homework offline uh, to see how it, tri you know, cross correlates with uh, the power meter and the ALC and so forth. But uh, I think I need to do a little uh, homework and then uh, sometime get back to you. So for today, uh, uh, I, I don't want to worry you out anymore <laughs> today. And thanks for the help. Well, Roger, I think the, the important thing is to be able to uh, uh, keep that ALC running mid-scale to two-thirds. You know, just to set that, uh, just uh, talk, uh, you know, work that microphone just like you normally would. Don't uh, yeah, get one, two, three, four. Don't get that way. Just talk the way you normally talk and the way you normally adjust the microphone and just bring your mic level up to where your ALC is running mid-scale to two-thirds. And then uh, start watching your uh, watt meter uh, as uh, you know, just a, a, a given uh, incentive to uh, keep your modulation up, Roger. Okay, Jim, I just wanted to let you know uh, you're, <laughs> you're pounding in here at 10 over on the 7300 and uh, uh, excellent uh, audio. Um, I had one last comment. Uh, oh, I'll think of that the next time. <laughs> so this is uh, WA2 Mike Quebec Kilo saying so long and thanks to Jim KC 9 VKB. Roger, Roger, Bob. And uh, if you would like, you can go to YouTube in the next couple of days and uh, uh, hear what your audio sounds like. Uh, I think it sounds, sounds great now that we've got some uh, adjustments made to it. If you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, uh, that will uh, take you to our QSO VLOG page. And on that page, you'll be looking for uh, my group air check 1320. Today's date. My group air check one three twenty. Roger. Roger and seventy three. Roger three zero eight. This is KC nine VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOG network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. November Kilo Delta Four India Zulu. Kilo Delta Four. Repeat the rest. Kilowatt Delta Four India Zulu. And Yazulu, Roger, what's the name there? Oh, the name is Jack. Uh, we've talked before. It's been about a year. Uh, I don't have my logbook up at the moment, but I'd, uh, I'd bet on that. And uh, we're using the 7300, a little amplification, and uh, I've got a Sennheiser uh, aviation headset. It's the S1. You're probably not familiar with it. doesn't matter. But uh, I use it because I do some net control work over. Roger, Jack. Uh, might, um, you know, the thing is, uh, you have that boom mic uh, right at your, at your mouth. And uh, what you want to do is be careful about how much uh, uh, compression you run because uh, you're in the area to uh, suck up that breath noise, you know, all the time. So uh, I suggest to just run that uh, compression at a three, a bare minimum, but it does exactly what it needs to do. If you, if you run it higher than a three, you, you know, it'll start uh, sucking up your uh, uh, breath noise and uh, all kinds of stuff, Roger. Three, three is the ideal, I think. Yeah, Roger that. No, I am at three, and uh, I got the mic gain about 40% right at the moment. Sometimes I run it um, closer to 30. Um, when I have the, the regular mic on here, I crank it back up. Sometimes I leave it at 40 because I forget to reset it. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, I guess. Go ahead.
Roger, Roger. Well, the main thing is it doesn't matter necessarily what the mic level is in numbers. The thing you want to concentrate on is the relationship of the ALC to, to uh, mic gain. And you want to run that ALC at mid-scale to two-thirds. So you adjust your mic gain to whatever gain you need to run your ALC at mid-scale to two-thirds. That If you do that, if you run your compressor at a three and your ALC uh, between mid scale and two thirds, you'll have a, a 3 dB dynamic range, and your average percent of peak modulation will be between 80 and 85 percent. Okay, very good. Well, let me uh, let me see what I need to do in order to get there, because right at the moment it's running about half scale, uh, just to the uh, top of the red, the little red bar on the uh, display here. I know you have a 7300 there. Let me see if. Uh, Changing it up to 50 helps me out talking normally. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going above that line. Uh, go ahead. Right. You don't want to go into the red. You want to stay out of the red. Uh, that's, uh, red is not good. You want to run that ALC mid-scale to uh, two-thirds. Roger. Okay. Uh, what I'm talking about is on the 7300, there is a red line from the zero point on ALC to about the midpoint. And maybe I've got that a little too hot. Uh, hello. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No. Nope. Doesn't seem to, uh, I don't seem to be uh, able to drop it back. It wants to sit right in that area. Over. Roger, I tell you what, set your mic at 45 and call it. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, if uh, if you look at that ALC now, now look at that meter. You know that meter is is showing a lot of stuff, and you want to be sure that you're reading uh, the correct ALC uh, uh, display, Roger. Yeah, Roger. No, it's it's the uh, second bar, second bar down, uh, underneath the uh, the normal S unit slash power out uh, reading. I have the uh, the full thing. Uh, there's a compression uh, meter below the ALC meter. Uh, below that's the SWR, and below that the current. Over. Yes, Roger, Roger. Uh, yeah, I, the thing is uh, that it looks like that you could uh, stand a little more level. Uh, what what mic are you running? Okay, it is a Sennheiser um, Electret, and it's got a uh, front and back. Uh, it's designed for aircraft use, and uh, that's why the front and back, because it's a noise counselor. Over. Roger. A, a good, uh, good filter. I, I don't hear any um, mouth noise hardly at all, so it, it's doing a great job there. Um, I would uh, say, um, you know, what you like. I say the mid scale to two thirds, and uh, usually that occurs uh, with a you know regular microphone at about maybe 40, 50 in there. Roger. Yeah, Roger. Okay. Well, we'll give that a try and, and, and see what goes. One thing I did do is I uh, just cut the active circuit out. It has two modes, uh, one passive, the other active. Uh, I think the active circuitry mostly affects the receive audio on my end, not so much uh, on your end. Uh, but it would possibly take out some of the noise cancellation as well. Over. Roger, whatever you're doing, I would run it just like that. I think you're ideal there. And if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search uh, for KC9VKV, uh, you'll be able to hear it, and I think you'll, you'll like it there. Uh, you know, I think you were running uh, too much compression, and it was uh, the the breath noise was getting in the way of uh, <laughs> everything. You know, so particularly when you have a mic that's on the, you know, hanging out there of an inch or two in front of you, uh, uh, breath noise can be a problem if you over compress. Yeah, Roger that. Well, that that's easy to fix because uh, I just pull the uh, mic away a little bit. I normally adjust it so it's about two inches from my uh, the corner of my mouth. Uh, not not much more than that. It seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, I haven't done any flying in a while, but uh, I had to uh, do about the same thing there, or I would uh, uh, kill the silly AM uh, radios that they use in the uh, little aircraft. Over. 
Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Yeah, I think you've got it there. Uh, and you know, like I say, th I found a three on the compressor to be ideal. I mean, you can, you know, you can force a compressor to 20 dB of compression, but it's not going to do substantially more than three or four dB. Uh, it's just that uh, it, uh, when it recovers, it recovers. Uh, you know, the cows are moving in the south 40, and and you never, it will never recover that much in normal speech, except try to you know and that's the breaths between the words so uh, a three does uh, just about as as much good but uh, a lot better from the standpoint of not pulling up a bunch of stuff roger yeah roger well i appreciate your help and i don't want to hold you i know you've got uh, other people going jim so uh, let me uh, just real quick i uh, was able to get my log up so we talked on 9 13 it was uh, much less time ago than i thought uh, 9 13 2019. I, I almost had it as last year at that time. Over. Uh, roger that. Roger that. Uh, you, on this frequency? Uh, absolutely. That was the one. Roger. Yeah, we pretty much uh, camp on this one on Friday afternoons. Uh, <laughs> we. Uh, you know, uh, have our accuser V like net, and that keeps us uh, busy uh, processing that uh, through the week. We do an hour and a half um, master uh, uh, recording, and then uh, as time permits, we bust out uh, uh, individual uh, segments out of that and post them separately. Roger. Yeah, Roger. No, it sounds like fun, and I have almost all the gear I need to do that sort of stuff here, but it's over on the other side of the basement with my guitar equipment, so <laughs> I've never, never bothered to try to hook it into the radios. Uh, a little, little reluctant to do that because what I do uh, on the radio doesn't take that kind of hi-fi. Anyway, Jim, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and uh, with that, I'll get out of your hair. Hey, happy New Year to you. And a uh, prosperous one at that. Katie for her eyes at. Roger, Roger, Jack. Three's that way, sir. Have a great uh, afternoon, beautiful weekend. And if you get a chance to join us next uh, Friday, we'd love to have you. Threes. Uh, this is KC9 of EKV. We're recording now live till 5. I, <laughs> oh, it's 5 o'clock. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, uh, we'll hang in there for another five minutes. Anybody want a quickie? Uh, come ahead. KC9 VKV. WA3 Fox Echo Tango WA3 FET Jim and State College Jim WA3 what was the rest yeah Fox Echo Tango field effect transistor we've talked uh, before some months ago and I'm the one that got uh, K1GZL to join your group there. Uh, you may not remember uh, Charlie up in New Hampshire. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to say hello and wish you Happy New Year. I know you're ending here. I'm uh, sort of in here late, but uh, just wanted to say Happy New Year to you, uh, Jim. We're over in State College uh, with the Penn State uh, Nittany Lions, you may recall. Uh, KC9VKV, WA3 Fox, Echo, Tango, Field Effect Transit. Mr. Jim in State College, Pennsylvania. Roger, Roger, Jim. Beautiful signal. Uh, probably about a 20 over. If I could, uh, if I could actually give you a uh, S meter reading. Uh, you know, I run such low RF in the front end. I, I uh, stay out of uh, compression uh, on the front end, uh, and because of that, I can't give you a real S meter reading. But I can say that you are about 15 dB over my noise level, so it gives you some idea there, Roger. Okay, well, you're also about 20 uh, over on my S meter, which I can read here on the uh, Flex 6600, and it just sounds beautiful there, Jim. Thank you for that great report over there. And I wonder, did uh, my good friend uh, Charlie, uh, K1GZL, did, did he come in uh, at the beginning uh, today? I, I was tied up uh, with other events and uh, could not make it, uh, but I've been listening uh, to your YouTubes uh, with uh, Charlie, and quite enjoyable there. He's quite a character, as you well know. Uh, KC9VKV, WA3FET. 
Roger, Roger, Jim. Yes, uh, he was uh, this morning, or uh, this afternoon. <laughs> Hello. Uh, he was in, uh, in, in all of his glory and, and wisdom and thought. Uh, I just love Charlie. Uh, he uh, has such good observations about uh, propagation and his, uh, his uh, activities down in uh, Australia. I mean, uh, he, uh, he contacts Australia just about uh, every, uh, every day, I think, there. And so I'm sure he has a, a good uh, propagation. Uh, uh, handle on uh, 40 meters. That's why I love him. He's he's up there, you know, t about uh, four miles from the Canadian border. So he's my early warning uh, system up there. You know, I think Canada's got some of those distant early dew stations up there. He's he's mine. He lets me know what's what I'm doing up that way. Roger. Yes, I know, I know, and uh, he loves when you put all the SDRs and receives them directly, and he does get up at 5 a.m. every morning, a little bit earlier than I uh, like to get up there, Jim, and he works uh, Australia, especially VK3MO. Well, Jim, I won't hold you there because I know I'm at the end, uh, but I'm glad I caught you here. <laughs> it's been a, been a while since I've been able to get in here with travels and other events, but uh, anyway, just great to hear you, and uh, you're doing such a fantastic job there and so happy to get Charlie uh, hooked up with you there. I knew that if Charlie got hooked up, it uh, might turn out to be something good. So I'm, I'm glad that we uh, told Charlie uh, about this uh, many, many months ago. <laughs> and now he's a, a regular on your uh, show there. Anyway, uh, again, Jim, uh, we'll say 73 to you uh, and uh, wish you and your family a very, very very happy new year hope you'll have many many contacts on the youtube i'll let you uh, uh finish up and uh i guess uh, uh, uh wind the tape as they say in the old days even though i think you're recording digital there by the way just uh mention digital uh here's just a few seconds of you here there, he's, he's mine he lets me know what what i'm doing up that way roger Okay, there's just a few seconds. You can hear how strong you are. Uh, KC9VKV, WA3FET. Uh, Happy New Year, uh, Jim. Roger, Roger, Jim. Three is that way, sir. Thanks for checking in. Always a pleasure. You have a, a real good afternoon, great weekend. And uh, if you can, uh, join us uh, next uh, Friday. We'd love to hear you. Uh, three is so This is KC9VKV, and uh, we're going to be winding down now. We want to thank uh, everybody that uh, participated uh, this afternoon. And uh, again, a reiteration that uh, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QC. VLOG page, and on that page uh, we're at about 880 QSOs, uh, air, uh, air checks, but you'll be looking for one in particular, my group air check 1320, that's today's date, my group air check 1320. 20. So we'll say threes for now, and uh, we'll be uh, returning this frequency back to uh, normal amateur use. This is KC9 VKV, clear.